Hello Sydney Tech Geeks, here we are at Dolby and Dolby has a fantastic new product that you may be interested in so I'll give you to the product manager and he can tell us all about it. Cool, hey, thanks. Yeah, so this is our CP750 and um, it's, it, it's totally designed towards the, the D cinema market space and uh, what I mean by that is the feature set <clears throat> is um, it comprises uh, multiple digital inputs so we have one for the main D cinema server and then three extra digital inputs for things like pre-show advertising, alternative content, even hook up your DVD player, Blu-ray player to it. Um, so that's one aspect of it. And the other is it's networkable, which is a big deal to the integrators out there that are, uh, they'll set up a network operations center and they need to be able to get into all the products and you know check the health and status of it, as well as um, being able to upgrade it remotely. They save on someone going out there to actually do the work and, and uh, save some money. So the fact that it's networkable, uh, multiple digital inputs and it's got a great price point so we, we really targeted the feature set to be you know no more and no less we wanted to really fit the market space just right and uh, so that's that's pretty much encompasses the uh, the overview of the product itself can you quickly go over the uh, the front fascia in this funky um, LED display or whatever <laughs> absolutely yep so it's kind of a cool display so as you can see it's um, the metering is uh, left center right uh, left surround, right surround, and subwoofer, and uh, obviously it tells us what audio format it's playing. It has to be a Dolby Digital Bitstream right now, so it's kind of an interesting display, kind of an interesting look, and um, <clears throat> and then our input buttons over here, of course. So they're, this is directly related to the inputs in the back of the box. So that's our server input, and then we have three additional inputs: um, a toss link and uh, some SPDIF inputs here. There's also a multi-channel analog input, an eight-channel input for for things like. For example, there are some theaters that will keep the 35 millimeter projector and they'll have the D-Cinema projector right next to it, so it's kind of a hybrid installation. So in this way, they could keep their old, because that means they have a cinema processor right now because they're playing film or they have been playing film. So this allows them to connect that cinema processor directly to this box. So they could set all their equalization to flat, that kind of thing, and let this product actually do the EQ for the channels. And uh, so that's pretty much what that, uh, that input accommodates. Then there's another one called non-sync, which is uh, actually it's used for intermission music. You can do things like it's it's a two-channel analog input, so you can do prologic decoding with it or uh, discrete left-right. There's a couple of different things you can do. And then of course a microphone input for PA, and we also use that for uh, to, for inputting our uh, multiplexer when we do our B chain alignment uh, during installation. So this is our setup software that we use um, for a number a number of things. It's a really cool monitor screen here. Um, again, you could, you could be connected to uh, at, a, at a knock center and be monitoring the product. You can actually control it, switch input formats, and so on. Um, and in addition, this is the software that we use to set up the product. Um, a couple of different tabs for different things. Setting up your network parameters, some of your uh, things like surround delay, things like that. And one kind of neat thing is each, each digital input has its own kind of setup tab. You can do things, for example, I could have, this is one of the spit of in, two-channel inputs, so I could tell it whenever it sees that uh, PCM stream to force a ProLogic 2 decode, for example. So kind of, this is where you set up things like that. Same with Do the Adobe Digital bit streams. It will automatically switch back and forth if it's a PCM or Adobe Digital bit stream. You could tell it to uh, just follow the metadata that's in, in the bit stream and do what it needs to do. You can force it to do uh, ProLogic decode, things like that, or a surround EX decode if it's a two-channel bitstream. So this is basically where, where you do that. Uh, more importantly, this is the, also the software you use to align the system initially upon installation. So this screen here is what you would use to set your individual channel levels for left, center, right, sub, left, surround, right, surround. Um, and additionally, the following tab is what we'd use to actually do the third octave, 27 band third octave EQ for each channel. And so what we do in cinema is we set this up. The curve you see here is, is actually referred to as the X curve in the industry. It's the ISO 2969 curve. And all the channels are basically set up to that curve, and the films are mixed to that curve, and they're played back to that curve. So theoretically, they would sound uh, similar or the same in the theater. So basically, this has got a, an, an X curve system built into it. So you just somehow plug in the microphones and you can go to this interface and do your X curve for the auditorium. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly correct. Typically what happens is the installer will have 
it's typically a four microphone multiplexer system. So we'll have four mics placed around in the auditorium in a pattern and uh, that will input We'll have a cable running up to the booth, and that'll input into the cinema processor microphone input, the resultant multiplex. And then this software then will display what that's seeing down in the auditorium. And so what we'll do is we'll turn on the pink noise, pink noise generator here in the processor. It'll send it out through the speakers, and the microphones will pick it up. And then subsequently, we'll, we'll EQ the result to the X curve. And that's basically how that works. Now, that's a fantastic feature, actually. I'm quite impressed. And now, if, if I purchase this device, does it come with the extra microphones and tools for doing that, or is that a, an optional extra? How does that go? Yeah, good question. So there, there are quite a variety of uh, microphones and multiplexers available out there, so it doesn't come with that. Uh, we, do, we do sell our own multiplexer system on the market, as well as there's many other companies that do the same, and the installers tend to have their, you know, their own favorite system that they've, they've had with them for years or whatever. So there's, there's a lot of different uh, systems out there for that purpose.